Hi, I'm Lisa Sarajian, Analytical Manager within Standard & Poor's Corporate Ratings Department. Welcome to Credit Matters TV. Standard & Poor's recently published a report that explores the impact of the record debt issuance activity experienced by North American chemicals companies. Here to talk with me today about the key takeaways from that report is Paul Kourias, a director from Standard & Poor's chemicals team. Paul, thanks for being here today. Good to be here, Lisa. Paul, what is the key message from the report? Debt levels at North American chemical companies have risen by a record amount in 2011 in 2012, I'm sorry, and at the beginning of 2013, they stand at an all-time high level of about $150 billion mm -hmm. at 74 rated North American chemical companies. Mm -hmm. Any way you slice it, debt is at a record level. Uh, we present information uh, in different ways in our report. One of the most meaningful ways we think we present information is at a static pool of companies, mm -hmm. which is static uh, starting 2007. So at this constant pool of companies, two debt has risen, two record amounts, uh, and, are, and is at about 120 billion uh, at, at this pool. Uh, the nub of our report mm -hmm. is that debt levels are at record levels, therefore refinancing requirements are very high, and so refinancing risk should be high going forward. But we take a pretty multi-dimensional uh, view of the situation, and we are also cognizant of uh, risk mitigants uh, mm -hmm. that are that are uh, in place and some of which have strengthened over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe there's a sort of dynamic balance between a potential higher refinancing risk and these risk mitigants and at this point in time our ratings accurately reflect the refinancing risk we expect uh, mm -hmm. going forward. Could you expand on the risks a little bit and maybe speak more specifically to some of those risk mitigants? Sure. Uh, we think the greatest risk lies at uh, speculative grade companies, even though uh, speculative grade companies have a lower share of total debt outstanding relative to investment grade companies. We have already seen one company uh, default in 2013, which had 100% uh, of its total debt outstanding due in 2013 and 2014. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'd reflected that risk in our ratings. The ratings were the rating was at a triple C minus with a negative outlook several quarters prior to the default. And there were other risks in there uh, other than uh, refinancing risk. Uh, so uh, clearly uh, refinancing risk is highest at uh, speculative grade companies. But even at speculative grade companies that had a high refinancing requirement in 2013 and 2014, we've seen a lot of capital market activity and we've seen some of these companies tap the markets and push out refinancing requirements mm -hmm. uh, beyond 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, which brings us to uh, one of our key mitigants, uh, our assumption that capital markets will remain accessible to even speculative grade companies going forward. And that's an important assumption because uh, capital markets seems to be the primary source uh, for companies to meet their maturing debt requirements. Mm -hmm. We've seen in 2008, and we discussed this in our report, uh, we've seen what happened to companies when capital markets tightened and refinancing risks, uh, refinancing requirements shot up uh, during this period. Mm -hmm. uh, the other uh, risk mitigant is the fact that uh, this huge increase in debt that I spoke about earlier at uh, starting 2007, uh, there's actually a 71% increase in debt starting 2007, has occurred almost entirely at investment grade companies. Mm -hmm. So debt levels at speculative grade companies have remained more or less constant. Uh, there's, there's a couple of other uh, mitigants in place. Cash balances have crept up over the years. Uh, cash balances are not as high as debt balances at the beginning of this year, but importantly, cash balances are higher than near-term debt maturities, mm -hmm. i.e. debt maturing in 2013 and 2014. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't necessarily believe companies will use their cash balances to meet uh, their debt maturing, but uh, it's, these cash balances will remain a source of financial flexibility. Mm -hmm. Uh, the ma debt maturities are well spread out into the future, so there's no lumpy years in the future where there's a, there, there's, there are large amounts of debt uh, maturing. These really are, are uh, some of the key risk uh, mitigants that are in place. So does that mean we see no refinancing risk? There is certainly going to be refinancing risk. We believe the risk is going to be manageable, and uh, you know I'll, I'll, I'll bring you back to the statement I made about that balance between a potential increase in refinancing mm -hmm. risk and strengthening risk mitigants. Mm -hmm. As long as that balance is in place, and in our base case, we believe that things will be in balance, 
uh, we think the refinancing risk will be manageable going forward. Okay, great. Thanks, Paul. Good to be here. And thank you for joining us today. For a more in-depth analysis, please see Paul's recently published commentary titled, Will Record Debt Levels Raise Refinancing Risk at North American Chemicals Companies? For S&P's Credit Matters TV, that's it for now.